Welcome to the Basketball Diary. We're at Boston College. I'm Wu. This is Olivier Hanlon, former ACC Freshman of the Year, first team ACC. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? What's going on, man? Just relaxing, working out, and just you know enjoying the process. Well, I want to get you on the show because uh, you declared for the NBA. And uh, before we even get to that, you know, a lot of people don't really know who you are because um, you don't play in the big blue blood programs. Mm -hmm. But before, before we even go forward, let's go backwards, backwards a little bit. And, you know, we could talk about what was it like for you growing up in Quebec? Uh, it was different, definitely different from uh, being in Boston. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of snow over there and it's real cold. But uh, I was just surrounded by a lot of good people over there that enabled me to, you know, get to where I am today. Uh, Basketball is not as popular where I'm from, but just being surrounded by the good, like a good group of people, and definitely, you know, playing for my provincial team, Team Quebec, and eventually playing for the national team, Team Canada, kind of helped me uh, get a little more exposure and eventually come to America. How did you? How did, how did basketball come into your life? Because it's Quebec is not a hoop area like you know, in America or Northeast America. Yeah. No, there's definitely good talent in, uh, in Quebec. It's just, it's not as popular over there. But uh, I first started playing basketball probably at an early age, I would say around five. And uh, my dad played basketball. So he played at the University of Ottawa U, which is about 10, 10 15 minutes from where I'm from. So mm -hmm. just growing up, I was seeing him play. And my older brother played and my older sister played. And after that, I played. and. It's kind of a family thing. My younger sister plays at my prep school where at New Hampton right now. So it's kind of a family thing and just everybody plays basketball. You, when did it become serious? Like, did you realize, you know, maybe, hey, maybe I'm, I'm pretty good, you know? I would say after graduating high school because uh, I was able to get invited to, you know, teams like the provincial team. Yeah. That enabled me to get an invite to the national team. And when I started playing on the national team and just seeing so many guys work hard and be successful at, uh, you know, national level and going to prep school and guys like Steve Nash that plays in the NBA kind of, I was really intrigued by that. So uh, I just admired their hard work and just kind of thought of it. At why not? Why not me? And uh, I got the chance to go play prep school in New Hampton and I kind of went off from there. If you didn't go to New Hampton, you're in Quebec, you didn't play basketball, what would your life be like right now? What would you be doing? Uh, it'll be, it'll be, it would be completely different uh, if I didn't play basketball because, you know, basketball has been a part of my life for a long time now. But uh, before playing basketball, I played soccer. So maybe I would have played, you know, soccer. I know there's a pro team in Canada and, you know, there's a few soccer players around my area. So I'll definitely go with soccer but I'll definitely still be playing a sport you know maybe not okay. basketball but I would be an athlete somewhere now it's a lot of people were surprised you know how you went poof, during your freshman year but before even that had happened you know you, I seen you play at New Hampton mm -hmm. and you're pretty good but you surprised a lot of people nationally on in terms of who watched high school basketball to college guys who look at basketball. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, you landed at Boston College. Um, I'm sure there was other schools. Everybody else were like, man, we should have got this guy. Um, and obviously you played three years here mm -hmm. and you finished off with first team all ACC. If you weren't at Boston College, what were your other, recruit what were your other recruitments like? Like, what was the story about that? Uh, well, my, my situation was a little different than, uh, you know, most Canadian players. I came from a different schooling system in French, so all the credits and all those things were kind of a little mixed up. But it came down to Dayton was recruiting me a lot, Virginia Tech, and uh, Virginia, actually. So if I wasn't at Boston College, I was probably at one of those three schools. Wow. And what gravitated toward, for you towards here, Boston College? I mean, obviously it's New England. You were in New England already, um, but what what made you come here? I just fell in love with the school, uh, the environment over here, and just not necessarily just the basketball side of things, but it's just school in general. There's a lot of good people around here, 
you know, great alums. And you make so many connections when you come to D.C. But at first, uh, I really liked the coaching staff and the style of play, the up and down tempo and, you know, drawing up plays and, you know, being an ACC and being able to compete against, you know, some of the best players in the nation. And that was one thing I was trying to find. Um, did you, before you came into Boston College, you ever expected yourself to have the accolades you built it up um, over the three years? Uh, I would say I, I didn't expect it to come so quick, uh, especially being a freshman and winning, you know, something like the freshman of the year, which is, you know, a crazy award to get. But, you know, throughout my two years at New Hampton and, you know, being, co being coached by Peter Hutchins over there and just he prepared me to, for the college level. And uh, playing in that NEPSAC league, there's so many good players that go through there. So I was facing, you know, top-notch competition every yeah. day when I used to play over there. And it just got me ready for college. So just working hard and just that summer right before coming out of Boston College, I just, you know, worked so hard just to make sure I was prepared to, to, to be able to compete against, you know, the best competition in there and just facing teams like, you know, the UNC's and, well, UNC, Duke, you know, and all the other good programs in ACC was something I was trying to be prepared for. Three years here, two, co you know, coaching change, a um, little bit of struggle on the win-loss column. Uh, what is the most valuable experiences you have gained through this, you know, roller coaster ride that you could carry for the next level? Well, first of all, I enjoyed my time at BC. You know, it was a fun time. Uh, I definitely thought I was going to win a lot more, but i just been so through so much adversity that it forced me to improve my game a lot faster and just grow up as, you know, a man. Uh, having two different coaching changes, you know, being with Coach D where it's kind of a up and down tempo, but more like X and O's and kind of, he was a great coach when it came to X and O's and going to forward to Jim Christian where it's kind of up and down and he really enabled me to just improve another side of my game that uh, I didn't uh, showcase so much my, my, my first two years at, uh, at Boston College. But I just feel like, you know, just going through so much adversity and just the way I am, just keep on working. And even when, you know, times were hard, I just kept on with my routine and just tried to prepare myself the most to be prepared for, you know, whoever I was playing that day or that night. Take me through your thought process when you declared for the draft. Um, what was going on inside you? Uh, you know, people don't know. I mean, there was news about, oh, he declared, but it didn't come from you. But what made you decide to I was put your name in the? Yeah, it, was that, it was definitely a tough decision. Uh, I love BC. You know, I love the new coaching staff. I love the old coaching staff. I just love the people around here. So it was definitely a hard decision to make. But I just felt like I was ready to take the next step and just, um, you know, go into my name in the draft. Uh, I just feel like everybody has, you know, a short window. And when you get a chance to, you know, go get something that you've been dreaming for X amount of years, you know, everybody should do it. But uh, it just came down to just my gut feeling. And how's the feedbacks from the NBA clubs that you've been getting throughout this year? Uh, the feedback's all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of teams that consider me as a first round prospect and there's some that consider me as a second round prospect, but uh, I'm just enjoying the process right now in the gym, you know, doing something I love to do, work hard and just, you know, get prepared for, you know, these next few weeks with, uh, you know, the NBA workouts coming up and just the whole process. But right now I'm just enjoying myself, just playing some, playing basketball and doing something I love. In order for you to have the success at the next level, what part of your game needs to be developed? I just feel like I have to improve, keep on improving on everything. Uh, kind of like my overall play. Uh, in college, I was known as, you know, scoring guard. Yeah. And I feel like I, f I still have to keep on improving on that aspect. But, you know, just all the other things like defense and just, you know, being a better leader. Uh, you know, being ball movement without the ball and just, just kind of my overall game. So right now I'm just focusing on 
just getting my conditioning up and just keep on working on all the little things I've been working on these past three years. What, what do you bring to the table and uh, why should a team consider you? I just want to win. Uh, definitely these past few years uh, we didn't win as much but I've been a part of you know a lot of winning programs and uh, prep school and when I played for the national team and my, my, my provincial team in Canada. So at the end of the day I just want to win. I'll put the team before me and just you know work my work my butt off every day and just try to be as prepared as anyone in, on the team and whenever I have an opportunity to showcase my ability then I'll take it. So hypothetically let's say if you were the fringe guy, the last guy to make the team what can you show the executives that you deserve that last spot? What do you have that another guy does not have? Uh, I would say I'm a crazy competitor. Uh, I'll show up at every practice, you know, try to be the hardest working guy at every practice and, you know, put in extra hours of work and just trying to, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to, you know, be the best version of myself. So if I do everything in my power to, to do that and it's you know, still not enough, you know, I'll be able to live with it. But uh, I just want to win, work hard and just, and just enjoy myself and doing something I love. You averaged about 35 minutes plus over the three years. You played 90 plus college games. Um, are you physically ready for the volume of 82 games or be, and beyond per year? Yeah, no, it's definitely crazy to think about. It's almost, I would say, what, a little over double the amount that, you know, a typical college player plays in a year. But uh, I don't know yet because I haven't been through it. So I know, you know, whoever whoever drafts me, uh, I know the coaching staff and everybody who works in an organization kind of prepares the rookies for the, you know, the NBA grind. It's definitely a long grind when there's 81 games in a season. But uh, I don't think that, you know, my shape right now is ready for it, but uh, eventually with uh, these next few weeks and these next few months, I'll definitely be prepared. What's your style of play that you like? Uh, I'm just an all-around player. I feel like at BC, uh, able me to see two sides of my game, having mm -hmm. two different coaching staffs. So I feel like with Coach D was more of a, not walk the ball up, but a little slower than Coach Christian. But, um, I adapt to you know whatever style of play. I like playing up and down. I like playing slow. I like you know having plays and just breaking it down and kind of picking apart the defense. So I'm kind of just you know whatever whatever coaching style, whatever the team style is. You know I'll be I'll be prepared to adapt to it. College guys and pro guys that you've watched, that you enjoy watching their game. Who are they? Oh, uh, there, there's definitely there's definitely a few, a lot of pro guys. Uh, I love watching. I loved watching Steve Nash when he used mm -hmm. to play, uh, and the newer guys. I love watching Curry and Damian Lillard. I just love the way they score and how they're so poised and so you know comfortable with the ball. To guys like Tony Parker, he's been doing it for X amount of years. Right. And it seems like he's not showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon. But I just like picking apart, you know pieces of certain guys and just trying to, you know, put it in my game. Is there a team that you enjoy watching the most in the league? I would say everybody enjoys watching the Golden State, State Warriors, Warriors right now. Uh, not just because of one guy, but just because, you know, the way they play up and down, everybody shares the ball. You know, on any night, it could be any guy's night. You know, everybody could go off for, you know, a 20 plus point game. And, you know, everybody seems just to be enjoying themselves. So I feel like I enjoy watching them, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people enjoy watching them. Who's the guys that you talk to the most in, in the, that you keep in touch with? In terms of? In terms of professional career, you pick their brains and, uh, you know, ask them for advice. Uh, I was lucky enough to some, so not, not this past summer, but the summer before that, I was lucky enough to get invited to, you know, a few NBA camps. Mm -hmm. So my first camp was Darren Williams, where I was able to go up against, you know, guys like Kyrie was there, you know, for a few days, and he was playing pickup with us, and Anthony Davis was there. But and after that, I went to the LeBron camp and the Chris Paul camp. But I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed all those camps. But just being around professional players and just seeing how they, just seeing how they are and how they, you know, approach workouts and how they're so specific with, you know, all the little details. 
when it comes to basketball, it really, you know, really intrigued me. And at the Chris Paul camp, it was just, you know, good going up against a guy like Chris Paul that was, you know, considered one of the best guards, yeah. you know, playing the game right now and just seeing how he's so fundamental and he's still so hungry, you know, even though he's been in the league X amount of years. But uh, I've just been pricking their, their brains and just kind of trying to take somebody, take one thing from every guy that I admire. What kind of details that you notice from those pro guys that was missing in your element of game that you like, oh, wow, I need to have that. Like, that's part that I need to add into my repertoire. I would say when it came to Chris Ball, even though Chris Ball is not as quick as he used to be, you know, his first couple of years in the NBA. Yeah. He was big on just reading the defense and kind of looking at the other players, whoever's defending him, looking at, you know, where his feet are or, you know, what angle can he get on the defender. And just small things like that that you can't, you might not realize when you're just playing up and down. Right. But if you, you know, force yourself to focus on little things like that, it, can, it could, you know, do you so much more than just, you know, just going up and down and just kind of going with the flow. But just to see somebody that's been so successful so for such a long period of time and just seeing how all the little stuff matters to him mm -hmm. and just keeps adding something to his game to make him, make him unstoppable. You have, uh, you played three years in college. W what's your advice for guys that are coming into college, um, whether they're known, ranked, or unknown? Um, what, what would you say to them? What's a message uh, for those guys as they go into high major or mid major or low major? Um, what should they be prepared for? And what should they just not even look at? Because, you know, they might be like caught up with certain things. So, yeah, definitely coming up in the, when you're in high school, there's so many, you know, rankings and top 100 and, you know, articles being written about yourself. And I just feel like when you come to college, you know, everybody's on the same level. Obviously, some recruits have more hype than others. But uh, for, for somebody like me that came to Boston College, not really known to a lot of people, uh, I just worked hard. And, you know, you have to stay hungry and just keep on working on working even when, you know, times are bad because, you know, time, the bad times are not going to last forever. So if you just, you know, keep humble and just keep working and keep doing whatever, you know, enabled you to get to that position you are in, you should be fine. You get your first paycheck, perhaps down the road. What are the three things you want to buy? I'll say I'll definitely buy a big TV. How big is the TV? Because we're, we're, we're already like 60 inches normal. So, I mean. I would say, I would, I would say in the 70s. Okay. I'm big when it comes to video games and just, you know, watching NBA games and having an H. Definitely a TV. I'll buy myself a, a MacBook. I really need one right now. And uh, I would say a car. But okay. uh, I'm not big when it comes to spending money. I just you know if I'm comfortable and have a few things, and I'll be happy. All right, what kind of car do you want? Uh, I would say it'll probably be between a BMW or a Audi. Okay. Doesn't have to be the one of the, you know, the new one of the year, but just you know one of those ones. And as far as video games, which one? What's your big biggest game that you you know? If you're a gamer, I love I love 2K. Okay. Uh, NBA 2K. I feel like any other college player. It should be. It should be your favorite game, but I would say 2K and uh, NFL. How good are you in 2K? It's a work in progress right now. You know, okay. there's a lot of there's a lot of good players, especially on my team at BC. But uh, it's just fun, just playing with, just you know, playing with guys that you know you might have known that play in the NBA and just playing with them and just okay. enjoying yourself. So. I just feel like whatever college team you're on, you know, 2K tournaments are definitely something that's going to be happening. Wow. All <laughs> right. And, you know, one of the last few questions is uh, tell, tell us something that we don't know about you, that we should know about you. Well, besides that I'm French, Canadian, I would say I love fishing. And I feel like nobody really knows that about me. I just love you know, just the calm and just, you know, just being out there on a lake or something like that and just, you know, having time to think and just enjoying yourself. So that's when something you, I love doing. 
When did you start fishing? I started fishing a long, long time ago. Probably, I would say 10. Uh, my grandparents on my mother's side, they have a house on a, on a lake that uh, when you see the young guy, you used to always go to. So I was always exposed to, you know, fishing growing up. You fish over here in New England area? I did not get a chance to fish over here, but uh, I'm excited about fishing, you know, the deep sea fishing. You know, it's not like, uh, not like in Canada, so you can, you know, catch a lot bigger fishes, uh, you know, in America and just, you know, just something I'll, I'll definitely try out in a few years, but I haven't yet. Finally, if people want to reach out to you, you're not a big social media guy. Um, no Instagram, no Snapchat, but you have, no, 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 you have Instagram. Yeah, I have Instagram. I don't no have Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter guy. I don't like to tweet too much, okay. but uh, I'm definitely on uh, yeah, what's, Instagram. What's your name on there? Well, my first name, Olivier, O-L-I-V-I-E-R-B-C-21. That's where you can find him, and uh, hopefully you'll see him in the uh, NBA draft. And I appreciate this. Thanks thank for having you. me. Hey, thank you very much. Good luck. Best of luck, all right? Thanks for having me. We're out. See ya.